Want to be a part of the notification squad? All you gotta do is like and share this video and make sure you stay subscribed so you never miss a scary story. Just ignore those strange steps upstairs, even if they're getting closer. This world is a strange one. Attics may be one of the creepiest places in your house, and that's only if you have one. They can be filled with relics, spiders, and sometimes even deadly secrets. Tonight, I'd like to share with you some allegedly true stories that will make you shudder at the sight of your attic door. You'll soon be hoping that the strange sounds coming from there will go away. But first, do you have any Instagram scary stories? Send yours over at darknessprevalence.org and it might appear in a future video. Also, consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash darknessprevails if you want to unlock dozens of bonus episodes. Now, you're about to realize that there's far more than just flowers in the attic. Number 1. My Old Country Home Submitted by Katrina P. I grew up in a small town near northwestern Arkansas in an old, large, white house with a white picket fence. On all sides of the one-acre property were open fields consisting of horses and cows with a few houses down the old country road. I had a wonderful childhood while living there, playing with my sister in the yard, helping my mother in her garden, and riding my bicycle down the long dirt road near my house a path that led to a large dark forest of chirping birds and towering trees. But such a happy life, however, was not without dark and unexplainable occurrences. Strange experiences have dotted my years of living there for as far back as I can remember. One stormy night when I was about four and my sister was seven, we were awakened by a loud clap of thunder. As I lie there in my bed awake, there was suddenly another clap of thunder. But just under that sound, I heard another. It sounded like a voice, and it said, Get out. It was the deepest and loudest voice I've ever heard. It almost overpowered the storm itself. Both my sister and I shot out of our beds immediately, and I accidentally stepped on our poor dog that was sleeping by the side of my bed. All three of us ran like hell to my parents' room, where we met them in their doorway, telling us that everything was okay, to just go back to bed. They were saying it's just the storm. Just the storm, huh? Well, not according to me and my sister. My grandmother stayed with us when my mother was recovering from gallbladder surgery. One early morning around four, my mother awoke to the light in the kitchen. When she slowly got up to investigate, she discovered my grandma sitting there at the kitchen table sipping on some tea. My mom asked her if everything was okay, and my grandmother slowly and shakily said to her, I don't want to tell you because you'll think I'm crazy. But she did end up telling my mom. She had apparently been sleeping in the attic in a sort of makeshift guest room when she woke up to the pressure on the bed near her feet. That's when she saw a white, foggy round figure at the foot of her bed. This thing then flowed off to the side of the bed and hovered above the floor as it made its way down the long room, only to pause in front of the window, turn, then flow like water slowly down the illuminated staircase. After that experience, she found it very difficult to stay in the attic room. The years went by with few strange occurrences, or at least ones that I paid attention to. But the day that my eight-year-old self decided that I did not want to share a bedroom with my sister anymore, that I would rather move into the spacious attic, that was when I began to take notice. I saw right away that the long, single-windowed room was kind of gloomy. It needs some pink and purple painted hearts on the wall, I thought so I began to paint away thinking that it would surely make it a little less creepy. Though my fear of the attic still got to me, despite my colorful additions, and I asked my sister to sleep up there with me. I woke up in the middle of the night to find that I was the only one there. 
It turns out that my sister thought it was sufficient to stay with me only until I fell asleep. After that, she went back to her downstairs bedroom. As I lay there silently in the darkness, waiting for my eyes to adjust, I heard my music jewelry box near the staircase on my dresser begin to play its song by itself. No one was there to open it. I managed to run past the music box and down the stairs, undeterred by my weak knees, and into my sister's room. And once I made it there, I spent most of my nights there from there on. There was just something about the attic, something I didn't care about returning to. Not long after I claimed and then left the upstairs attic bedroom, my mother, sister, and I decided to have a summer picnic dinner in the backyard. We'd have it under the lighted pergola while my father was away on a business trip. It was quite dark before I finished my dinner, so I picked up my dirty dishes and headed back to the house to put them in the kitchen while my mother and sister stayed in the backyard. So I entered the kitchen, only a little bit illuminated with the dim light from the stove. Within a few seconds of setting my dishes on the counter, I heard what sounded like a heavy man slowly stepping down the wooden attic stairs that were situated on the other side of the wall of the kitchen. I seriously thought that a stranger had entered our home and was now coming down the attic stairs. So I gathered my courage, and in my deepest and bravest nine-year-old girl voice, I yelled, Come out with your hands up! The police are here! Yeah, I know, it's kind of a stupid thing to do if there actually was a person there. But believe me, at the time I thought it was a brilliant idea. Then the second I could, I ran outside to my mother to tell everyone what I heard. Soon she comes inside with me, mostly convinced that what I heard was just my imagination. That is, until she heard it too. As soon as she did, she picked up the metal baseball bat that was in my sister's room, then told us to grab the phone and get ready to dial 911. We stood stone still in front of the closed door that led to the attic, staring in anticipation and fear, listening for the footsteps, until they suddenly stopped at the bottom of the stairs, right in front of the door. And then all three of us saw the purple glass doorknob begin to slowly and very smoothly turn. Mom panicked and grabbed the doorknob herself, only to yank it open and reveal that nothing, that no one was there. Quite shaken up and disturbed, we three decided to share my parents' bed that night, though I don't think any of us went to sleep. After that, a few more uneventful years went by. Only little things seemed to happen here and there, but nothing freaky. That is, until one afternoon. We were getting ready to go to my high school choir concert, my sister and I had since flip-flopped ownership of the attic bedroom. I took the downstairs room and she took the upstairs. I remember just how panicked my sister was when she ran down the steps. As I got to the base of the attic stairs to see what was going on, I saw my sister in just a bra and panties flying down the steps, slipping and falling on the last three. Her complexion was drained of any color, and she said in breathless words, there's, there's someone there, there's someone in my bedroom. I saw her standing there. Well, turns out, as she was standing in front of her tall mirror in her bedroom, brushing her hair, she suddenly saw the reflection, the reflection of a girl standing about 10 feet behind her. The girl was wearing a long light blue sleeping gown and had straight black hair. And even creepier, her legs didn't seem to touch the floor as they simply faded down. Her eyes were this electric blue that stared emotionlessly back at my sister through the mirror. This was when my sister got the heck out of Dodge and quite literally cascaded down the stairs, not even attempting to turn around to face this thing. My mother heard enough of the story. She walked quietly and calmly up the stairs to the attic while my sister and I waited in silence, almost wetting ourselves. I was scared for my mother, and I shakily asked her, are you okay up there? But there was only more silence, 
until it was finally broken by my mother, calmly telling whoever was up there to just stop scaring my girls. I don't want you scaring them anymore. I don't know if they listened, but things did calm down after that. No more creepy things happened in that house. I suppose that the ghost took heed of my mother's wishes and finally left us alone. All I know is, no matter how much you pay me, I'm not going to step foot in that attic ever again. Number 2. The Knock Knock Ghost Submitted by Melissa B. I've always believed in ghosts and paranormal activity, all those unexplainable things. And before we moved, I had lived in the same house for about 14 or 15 years. I had always loved my old house and felt safe, even though I would hear noises at a very specific time in the night, around one in the morning. I loved staying up at night, but every night there would be knocks coming from the attic. I would always tell my mom and dad what I'd heard every time, my dad being one of those who doesn't believe in anything paranormal. He doesn't even watch scary movies. He just hates anything like that. So of course, when I told him what I heard, he would just brush it off as a cat or some kind of animal. The noises would continue though. I'd always hear something at one in the morning, every day. Well, one night, I was playing on the computer and getting a little sleepy early. So I went to bed and I didn't hear anything that night. Maybe I just slept through it. The next morning was a bright and beautiful day. Not thinking about the noises I heard almost every night, I just laid in bed trying to wake up a little more before I actually got up. That's when I heard the sound of running footsteps right above me. Frozen in fear, I put my head under my blanket and I waited. After a while, I heard my mom pull up from getting her morning coffee. I was so terrified of what would happen if I made any noise. So slowly, I got up, and when I could, I ran for the door. But once I got closer to the front door that leads outside, I remembered one of the attic's doors was right outside that front door, which unfortunately meant I would have to run fast past whatever was moving around out there. So I closed my eyes, and I ran as fast as I possibly could, nearly running into my mom and her friend, with confused looks on their faces, they asked what the heck I was doing. What was wrong with me? I told them everything that had happened, and they looked at me as if I was pulling their legs. So I tried to convince them of this whole thing, to try to get them to go to the attic to see what was going on. But they finally heard enough, and they were tired of the whole thing. They walked over to the entrance of the attic, but there was nothing there, not even our cat, and soon they thought I was joking. Yet still, even though they didn't believe me, the noises came every night at one in the morning. My mom and dad went out one night for dinner. My sister was about three at the time, so me and my friend were watching her, and I was telling her the story of what I'd been hearing in my room. Then, knock, 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 right above our heads. I finally got someone to believe me, so we knocked back at the noise with a fire poker, at the exact spot we heard it knock. Then it knocked back to us. We walked across the house and knocked on the other side to see if it would follow. And when it actually did, it took our breaths away. Then we decided to try again. It would knock back again every time as we continued into different parts of the house. And no matter what, it would knock where we were. About 30 minutes after we began knocking, my mom and dad walked through the front door and both me and my friend ran up to my dad. We were excited and scared, so we told him everything that had happened. We knew he wouldn't believe us, but we showed him. We knocked on a spot in the ceiling and it soon knocked back. He was still skeptical about the situation, so he took the fire poker from us and decided to try it himself. He walked into the kitchen and poked on the ceiling and of course, Whatever was above us knocked right back. After a while of him being confused and a bit freaked out about what was going on, he went into the attic himself to find nothing there. So the noises continued until we finally moved out in 2012, 300 miles from our old house. We never figured out what it was 
and I'll never forget the feeling of dread that it brought with it. Number 3. There's Something in the Attic Submitted by Ruby My house has three stories, including the basement. All the bedrooms are upstairs, and my old room just happened to be right below the door to the attic. I always found it incredibly hard to sleep in that room, as it was always either freezing in winter or nearly 100 degrees in the summer. None of the other rooms were like this, but I always assumed it was just faulty AC. Anyway, around three years ago, I began to hallucinate at night. Nothing big, just stuff like my blanket turning into a snake and falling off my bed, or ants everywhere that would disappear when I turned on my light. So at night, I never took anything too seriously, as it's usually just my overactive imagination and being half asleep. It started when we first moved into the house. I slept in a different room then, but of course, I still had trouble sleeping. Every night at the exact same time, when everyone was asleep but me, something would knock on the roof four times. It was always four times, and to me, it sounded like a hammer, and it was only a little bit ominous. It continued for about a week before it stopped. I never told anyone because I knew they wouldn't believe me, and I knew I couldn't tell whether or not it was real. Other small things happened. Sometimes when I was upstairs alone, my door would open or close, and I wrote it off as the wind. One thing that really freaked me out, though, was that my dog, who stays in my room most of the time, would begin to bark every time it happened. After the third time, it was obviously not a coincidence, and from then on, I tried to avoid going upstairs by myself. It was just too unsettling for me. And then it got worse. I was home alone one day, but this time it was broad daylight. I was watching TV, and my dog was with me downstairs. That's when I heard scraping from upstairs, as well as this clicking sound. It was like a dog's nails hitting wood. I, of course, freaked out when I heard it, but I tried to ignore that it was there. Yet the noise continued, but now it sounded like whatever was upstairs was now opening and closing doors, something that had claws raking the floor. And I saw it as well, flicking the lights on and off up there. The weird thing was, my dog was acting completely normal this time, so I just turned the TV up, trying to pretend it wasn't happening. But it got worse, and the worst part was I knew it was real, because I don't hallucinate at daytime. My dog actually went upstairs to whatever was making the noise, which really freaked me out, because whatever that was, it was apparently something she was used to and comfortable with. The noises eventually died down, but I put off going upstairs for as long as I could. I didn't want to go back up there. I finally went back to my room when it was very late, and as always, I couldn't sleep, especially after what I heard earlier. I stared at my ceiling when I noticed a black square. The door to my attic was halfway open, but no one, not a soul had gone up there for years. We didn't even store anything up there. It should have only been insulation. I got the heck out of my room after that. I was not sleeping in there. I ended up sleeping on the couch. The next day, my family even asked if anyone had gone into the attic. I still don't know who or what is in my house, but ever since I've traded rooms with my brother, things have gotten better. One of the rare times I went back to that bedroom, I sat on the bed while my brother was in the bathroom because his room has the Wi-Fi router in it. And I swear, I heard something breathing under the bed and I was wide awake. Number four, Attic, submitted by Anonymous. I was young at the time, about three or four years old. I don't remember much from when I was young. Back then, I really had no sense of right and wrong. But I do remember my older sister, who was always terrified of the attic in our house. 
Now, the reason for this was because my parents told her some monster lived up there. Of course, me being so young at the time, it never really scared me. It made me curious though, but not scared. Around when I was six and my sister was nine, she was completely freaked out by it. I remember one day she came tearing down the halls, screaming that something had leapt out at her. My dad followed shortly after, wrapped up in a white sheet, laughing as if something extremely funny had just happened. I didn't put it together at the time, but I later realized that my dad must have scared my sister somehow, proclaiming himself as the monster in the attic. That night, my sister insisted on sleeping in my bed, which I thought was funny because I was the younger one. When I asked her why, wondering what was wrong, she began to cry and said that she saw the monster in the attic and that it was completely real. Being young, I didn't know what to think. Now, as I grew up, I figured the whole thing was a joke, a lie, like Santa Claus and the Tooth Fairy. I started to think why my parents wouldn't let us in the attic, and I concluded it was because we were young, and they didn't want us to go up there and get hurt. My sister never mentioned it again as we grew up, which all supported my theory. That reason stuck with me all throughout my life to just a short while ago. You see, mom had passed away a long time ago due to some medical issues, and dad had passed just recently. There was a will though, saying that half the furniture in the house goes to me and the other half to my sister. But my sister and I hadn't been close in years, and we only saw each other on holidays. So I wasn't at all surprised when all I got was an email from her saying that I could have first pick at the house. Gladly, I rented a moving truck and I went down to our old place, leaving my own wife and kids at home. I opened the front door, getting a heavy sense of nostalgia, since it had been 10 years since I've set foot in that house. Memories of my family and I came back to me, and I walked around, carrying a cardboard box in case I see anything valuable or interesting. Right away, I saw which furniture I wanted, what I had space for, what I should sell, I filled a few cardboard boxes up with books and photos and old trophies and I began to carry them back to the truck. But then I passed by the stairs that led up to the attic. Something made me stop, probably because I remembered the whole scene with my sister being afraid, afraid of whatever supposedly lived up there. I placed the box down and began climbing the creaky stairs up. Step, step, Step. I forced open the old door, brushing some cobwebs that had formed on the handle. I felt the wall for a light switch, flicking it on. Light filled the room and revealed nothing but an empty attic with a few blankets in one corner. It all seemed so silly now. I was right all along. My sister was just an impressionable kid and was just being afraid. But then I noticed something. Something under the old blankets in the corner of the room, bunched up like a ball. I slowly made my way over, and I carefully pulled the dirty sheets off of whatever was under there. I instantly cowered away, my hand over my mouth in case I was going to vomit. It was some person, a human, all curled up into fetal position. It lay there dead and erratic. I don't know how long it had been there, and I reported it to the police, but I'm beginning to think that my parents had far more secrets than they let on. Number five, the demons that burned my house down, submitted by Aiden K. A couple of months after my dad passed away, my family bought a house for a very cheap price, but since we were living in a one-bedroom cabin, we weren't complaining. All was well and good, until one day when my grandparents left and we began to hear sprinting in our attic. Our Uncle Wayne was in the house with us at the time. He heard it as well, so he went to this room that was connected to our house, but outside as well. It's hard to describe. He went over to investigate the attic, 
And then, the next thing we know, Uncle Wayne just starts screaming. He runs out of the room with three scratches on his left forearm. Sure, the scratches were scary when he told us, but what else he said was far more horrifying. He said he had heard someone, a person mimicking the sound of a cat. He swear he heard someone say, meow. And then you know what happens next. He gets clawed by something and runs downstairs. Well, a week or two after that, my mom woke up with the feeling something was watching her. When her eyes adjusted, she saw me sitting on top of her dresser, just staring at her. Now, this dresser was about four feet tall, and I was only three foot two, so she called out to me. Aiden, what are you doing up there? You should be asleep. Then she noticed running coming from the attic, and when she looked back at the dresser, I was gone. I don't remember this happening. I don't remember climbing on her dresser just to freak her out. And all the time we would hear that strange running in the attic, it seemed to come and go every other day. But I do remember part of this experience. You see, I wasn't in her room when she said she saw this. Our rooms are separated by a wall. They're right next to each other. And I actually heard my mom call out to me, asking me why I was on the dresser. I remember thinking how weird that was at the time because I was just sitting there in bed. So that night I got up to go and check on her to see what she was talking about. And as soon as I opened the door, the running started again up above us and there was no one in her room with her. I looked at her straight in the eyes and she had this weird, scary expression on her face as if she had just seen something she couldn't understand. She said it was nothing and then she said to go back to bed. The next day, me and my sister Haley were playing outside when the door to the attic room slowly creaked open. Well, we went inside to investigate without a second thought, and when we got inside, we began knocking around on the walls. I'm not sure why we did, but we felt compelled to. Haley knocked three times, and we both waited and listened. Then something knocked three times back. We did this for about five or six minutes before we went back inside and I went to my room. It kind of freaked us out. Back in my room, I was alone and I was scared because I felt like something had been watching me. I felt like something was in the attic with us. Then I had a terrible idea. It sounded good at the time. I was just thinking if I could make friends with whatever this was, then it would leave me alone and wouldn't hurt me. So as I sat there on my bed, I called out to seemingly no one, saying, will you be my friend? Only to hear a whisper in my ear before I even finished the sentence. Yes, it said. And it was then that I realized that that was a mistake. The next day, my mother came to wake me up for school in my room. When she saw that I was leaning against a wall, with a bloodshot eye. She panicked and touched my shoulder, and I just fell to the floor. She looked at the wall and screamed, because I had been bleeding on the wall, and it had dried to the spot. When I went to school later that day, there was this kid named Ty. He was supposed to be in the second grade, but was still in kindergarten. And let me tell you, Ty loved to see me sad. But this day was different. When we went to recess, he yelled at me to give him my food. But instead of what I usually did, I just completely ignored him. And this pissed him off. So he picked me up by the throat. He continued to yell at me until my teacher, Mrs. Flynn, saw what he was doing. She came over and pulled Ty off of me. But the moment my hands were free, I punched Ty as hard as I could in the face. She looked at me surprised and said that we had to go to the principal's office and that I was in big trouble as well. I didn't listen. I turned around and jumped over the fence of the schoolyard and I ran all the way home. It was only a few blocks away, but all of this was something I never thought I would do. And it wasn't just that day. I began to act up more and more, acting more aggressive every day. I remember hearing something from my mom after all of this went down. She said that one day I came up to her 
and just randomly admitted that there was going to be a fire soon. This really freaked her out and she didn't know what to do with that. So she just looked at me and said, honey, don't worry, there's not going to be a fire. She says that I told her yes, that there will be, because my friend said so. Then I walked away, leaving her confused and a bit distressed. Well, later that day, the house did catch fire. After everything that happened, we were forced to move, and we moved pretty far away, mostly because I think my mom wanted to be away from that place, and luckily for all of us, especially me, I heard nothing from my little friend any longer. You can actually read the newspaper article about our house fire by searching Yvonne Sayer House Fire. This story is no lie. Houses are meant to keep us safe, but they are often ancient domains that had a deep and dark history long before we arrived. Even your home at this very second has its secrets in every room, mysteries in the basement, the crawl space, and even the attic, things that will have you questioning why you're living there at all. But everything will be fine so long as you never go and investigate those strange noises you hear because that's when bad things happen. That's when people end up dead. Good night. Be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. And don't forget to send us your Instagram scary stories at darknessprevails.org. Also, a huge thanks goes out to all my newest patrons. They are Emmanuel S., Cassandra Sanchez, Joshua Guest, Christy Close, Rebecca Rodolfo, and Kim Brown. Thank you all so much for going above and beyond the call of duty to help support this channel.